some tea to spill. Did you know if you constantly keep attracting toxic men, you're always getting your heart broken, having to deal with trash men who don't have their ish together, it actually doesn't mean that all men are trash, it means that you have some work to do. It is a rude awakening, okay? And I can say that because I've experienced it. I had the worst dating experiences and I didn't get into my first healthy relationship which I've been in for a while now until I healed my attachment style and I'm not here to gatekeep so in this video I'm going to teach you guys how to do it. In this video I'm going to be covering all of the attachment styles avoidant, fearful avoidant, slash disorganized, anxious and secure okay and if you have an insecure attachment style how you're going to then change to get a secure attachment style so that you can level up your dating life just as I did because I had an avoidant attachment style for the longest and it wasn't until I put these tips into effect that I became secure. It is very possible to change your attachment style. And if you're not already, make sure you're following at Sojourner Studio on Instagram, which is my jewelry brand, because this is part of the new summer collection. There's going to be so many cute jewels dropping and maybe some bracelets too, but I'm not going to say too much on that yet. Make sure you follow it so you don't right, miss. Before we jump into this video, I want to announce that this video has kindly been sponsored by an amazing women's clothing brand called Esther. My favorite thing about this clothing brand is how unique their collection is. And if there's one thing you should know about me is that I don't want to be dressing like everybody else. Esther has such trendy clothing, but they put their own spin on it and they have the most unique designs that I have ever seen. So I picked a few clothes from their website and ordered it and I thought I would do a little lookbook to show you guys how beautiful this clothing is. Every single clothing item I ordered from Esther is of such high quality and I just love the artistic vision that they've incorporated to every single piece. It's so innovative, it's so refined and it really meets my value of stepping out into the world and having... TAM15 on Estee's website for 15% off site-wide and you can use the code TAM20 to get 20% off all orders over $199. You can find the links to all of the clothing I was wearing in my little mini lookbook down below in the description, all of the links, discount codes and relevant information you need. So happy shopping. So chapter one, understanding attachment styles. Let's start off with how do we even get our attachment style in the first place and how can it change throughout our life? As technically our attachment style stems from how we were treated as a child from our family members. However, it can also change throughout our life. For example, if you felt lonely or isolated or insecure or went through any trauma throughout your teen years or your young adult years, your attachment style can change then. Even if you go through a traumatic relationship, abusive relationship when you're in your 20s, your 30s, it can change again according to your life experiences and how your mindset changes. So how do you even know what your attachment style is? I'm going to go through all of the signs and then you can decide which one fits you best. First off, avoidant attachment. So an avoidant attachment style is caused by physical neglect, emotional neglect, a lack of empathy and affection from the parents. So if they constantly put you down, talk, like invalidated you, told you not to cry, that you were being too sensitive, uh, told you that it wasn't okay basically to express any negative emotions like anger or sadness. So as a result, when you've been exposed to inconsistent care and a lack of affection, you then develop a fear of closeness, which builds up this avoidant attachment style because then your isolation becomes your safe space and relationship relationships with others represent danger, chaos, and pain, much like what you experienced growing up. So what are the consequences of an avoidant attachment style? Well, if this goes unhealed, you will have trouble feeling or showing your emotions. You'll feel uncomfortable with too much physical closeness. You'll get the ick when people are too clingy or dependent on you when really they're just being caring and affectionate and loving towards you. You might get stuck in this serial data or situationship phase because you fear commitment and getting too close to people. And you're constantly self-sabotaging 
and choosing the wrong partners for yourself because it's easier to jump from partner to partner than actually realize the person in front of you loves you and then you have to be vulnerable with them and stay with them. And this is because good people, the nice guys, ick you out and you turn away from them because they represent the true love, affection and care you deserved but didn't get in childhood. And as we grow up with these insecure attachment styles, we try to replicate the chaos we experienced when we were younger because that's what feels familiar to us even though it's no good for us. You might also settle in relationships with people where you know it has no future. For example, they're married or they're not in the right culture or they also have commitment issues. So now let's go through the signs that you have an avoidant attachment style. You might say or think some of the following. Oh, oh my God, I don't have any time for them. They're taking over my life. They're too clingy and dependent on me. I'm better off on my own, okay? I wasn't meant for a relationship. See, this wouldn't happen if I was with someone else. I don't get it. I liked this person for so long, but now that they are reciprocating that energy and they like me back, I am no longer interested in them. Other signs include your eyes may always linger when you're dating someone because you always think something's better around the corner. You're always looking for your next date. You have extremely high, rigid, and superficial standards that you refuse to budge on because this form of self-sabotage keeps us safe from settling down with the one. You fantasize and romanticize about your exes or past situationships and people that you are not in your current relationship with. You flirt, lead people on, and breadcrumb just for fun. You only think you can rely on yourself and you refuse to ever ask for help. You always find an ick or something to pick on with the person that's actually treating you right and you always find some sort of flaw in them and use that as an excuse to leave. You have trust issues, you don't like opening up, you have poor self-esteem, you always think, why can't I emotionally attach to this person? Sometimes you actually desire having a long-term relationship, but it's never with the person you're actually dating. So to sum it up, you need and value your space so much that you will cut off anyone that even slightly threatens that. You're more likely to attach your worth to your success and achievements and then put love and relationships second. Attachment style number two, the fearful avoidant, AKA a disorganized attachment. What this means is you have both the symptoms of an avoidant attachment style and an anxious attachment style all mixed into one. This attachment style is caused by exactly what the avoidant attachment style was caused by. So a lot of neglect when you were growing up and the consequences of this attachment style is also the exact same as before. You're gonna struggle in relationships, you won't commit and you'll constantly self-sabotage because of that chaos you were familiar with growing up. An avoidant attachment style dismisses is the importance of love and close connections with others whereas a fearful avoidant values this they seek it out they really want this in their life but the avoidant part of them the part of them that experienced trauma growing up prevents themselves from actually getting this so it's like constantly longing for love and care and affection from others but then pushing them away when they try and give it to you because it's so unfamiliar they crave that validation and that feeling that somebody cares about them they just have trouble reciprocating it when it comes to their turn they can be very sensitive to any signs of rejection or withdrawal this is because they regularly fear being abandoned by their friends partner or family they also shy away from any physical closeness or emotional connection because they perceive these interactions as a threat to their independence and also a threat to being hurt. They also have trust issues, mood swings and difficulty communicating their needs due to their fear of judgment criticism or rejection. On to number three, the anxious attachment style. Now this attachment style is caused by inconsistent parenting. When your caregiver might say you're the best one day and then you're the worst the next. It's like a constant roller coaster of emotions. So then you have low self-esteem and you constantly fear being rejected because you don't know where your partner or caregiver is going to stand on that day with you because of that constant roller coaster of emotions. And the consequences of having this attachment style is that you are going to be very clingy and codependent. You constantly need reassurance and validation from others because you didn't have that growing up. You struggle with being left alone. You always want to be around others. You need a lot of emotional support. You fear abandonment. And a lot of the time you feel unlovable. Another consequence of having this attachment style is that you feel the need to perform for love. You feel like you have to earn it because that was very similar to how you were raised. If you did something good, you were the best. If you made one little mistake, you were the worst and you were then verbally, emotionally, maybe even physically abused. You place your desirability in the hands of others and their perceptions, opinions and actions towards you. So if someone's having a bit of an off day and it's got nothing to do with you, you're going to think it has everything to do with you and then feel worse about yourself as a result thinking they don't like me I am a terrible person I did something wrong you take everything personally you get lost in another person when you're dating them and you become obsessed 
you probably experience a lot of anxiety when someone's taking ages to text you back because then you go into this whole of oh my god they don't like me they're leaving me i'm not good enough you act like a mind reader and you're constantly trying to assume the other person's thoughts oh they didn't like that i'm saying that or they probably don't like me anymore or what if they're thinking this or this about me when you're dating you probably think things like i'll never find anybody else or you kind of feel lucky to find someone who thinks you're bearable and wants to stay with you so you pour your everything into that person because you just don't believe that there are an abundance of people out in the world that would also be interested in you you have a lack mindset so you might think oh i knew this would go wrong nothing ever goes right for me i'm so unlucky you have difficulty setting boundaries and this leads to other people constantly taking advantage of you you feel jealous and possessive when you are in a relationship or maybe even when it's your best friend and they're interacting with other people and finally attachment style number four the secure attachment it's important we understand this fully because the rest of the video is going to be committed to helping you heal your insecure attachment style and move to this secure one people with a secure attachment style tend to have a more positive outlook on life on relationships they have better relationship and dating experiences they master the detachment mindset while still being able to experience care love and affection they can actually maintain healthy connections with others for a long period of time they don't overthink they're comfortable with intimacy and they know when to reach out for support because they have built a beautiful good healthy support network around them they're trusting of others they naturally assume everybody has good intentions they are able to communicate their needs in a mature and effective way they don't fight or get defensive or aggressive they can handle conflict maturely and with grace and kindness they are comfortable with their alone time and their independence and they know how to balance that while also maintaining relationships with others they are not dependent on anybody they don't need anybody but they are still able to give out their care and that love to everyone and because they feel good about themselves they treat you with love respect and loyalty and they don't play games they know what they want and then they go out and get it so now the next chapter of this video chapter number two will focus on how you can move from an avoidant attachment to a secure one and then chapter three will cover how you move from an anxious attachment to a secure one if you are a fearful avoidant or have a disorganized attachment style then both of these chapters will benefit you and you will take advice from each now i'm going to use relationships as a primary example throughout this video when giving advice but all of this can also be applied to friendships and familial connections as well for me, the most change I experienced with my mindset from avoidant to secure happened in as little as three months. However, I see it and so many other people see it as a ongoing task, okay? You're gonna be working on this throughout your life because not everybody has the most perfect attachment style. We all have our own weaknesses to work on consistently throughout life. It is a lifelong journey because you need to practice these tips throughout an abundance of situations, right? When you're alone and going through your self-love single era, when you're just going out and dating for the fun of it, when you're in a long-term relationship. The goal here is just to become 1% better every single day. That is all you can do, okay? Perfection is not expected of you. Just the fact that you're watching this video speaks volumes about your self-development journey and how far you are gonna get with it, okay? You have unlimited potential. So let's jump into the advice. Chapter number two, healing and avoidant attachment to move to a secure one. Now, many people might admire you even for having an avoidant attachment style because you're so independent, you never get your heart broken, you're so unbothered by everything, and that's a cool trait to have in this generation. In fact, if you have an avoidant attachment style, you may even have a slight superiority complex because you see everybody else out here being anxious about whether they're getting a text back and you just simply don't care. Because you're walking around being hyper independent knowing you don't need anyone and that makes you feel better about yourself. And I learned that attaching to your solitude and your isolation can be a dangerous tranquility if you don't learn to have that balance. And understanding that right there was the beginning of my mindset shift and my journey to having a secure attachment style. And now here is everything else I did. One, I built self-awareness around my toxic traits. For example, I took accountability and started actually noticing when I was starting to pull away and fixate on small irrelevant imperfections in the person I was dating for absolutely no reason other than self-sabotage. And by actually noticing that I was pulling away when things were starting to get serious, forced me to stop blaming the other person for the relationship crumbling and falling apart when really it was just my own mind playing tricks on me. And this then prevented me from ending things so suddenly for no reason and actually giving people a chance. Because the first step to actually healing being an avoidant is giving people the chance to get closer to you. So you can go that step further that you never allowed yourself to get to before because you would cut things off. 
Two, I set myself a challenge to practice using support rather than becoming addicted to my self-reliance. So this looked like asking a friend or my date for advice on something I'd already made my mind upon but this would just allow me to build up the habit of starting to reach out for support and advice and allow those people in my life to actually show that they hold value. Or I would ask them for a favor on a task that I knew I could easily do myself just to build that trust and that bond because that's what brings people closer together. Three, I journaled with gratitude. I had to do this every single time I started judging my partner harshly. So I would have to list every single good thing they did for me, every single romantic act they did, every single or gift they bought me, times they were there for me, great conversations we had, great memories we made together. I only had to do this in the beginning but it really helped and I would always read this list when I found myself getting very judgmental because I would reflect on all of these good things and it prevented me from running away with all of my avoidant thoughts because you think your avoidant thoughts are protecting you and saving you from a relationship that you're not meant to be in when in actuality your avoidant thoughts are just your past trauma repeating in your mind over and over and over again. It has nothing to do with your current reality. Four, I practiced having an open mind. Now we all know I am all for high standards and building a list of your ideal partner. I have always done that. But you can't be so rigid because that rigidness is a form of self-sabotage which is encouraging you to keep dismissing people. So for example, one of my boxes was I wanted a partner that was super creative and entrepreneurial. Is that super important and does that reflect what kind of a good person they are and how they're gonna treat me and how our relationship is gonna be long-term? No, it's quite a superficial standard and while it's okay to have them, it's equally as okay to be open-minded and flexible with them. Five, I realize that communication is not the enemy. Practicing communication is the most loving thing you can do when building a relationship with somebody. I have told my partner, listen, I really don't want to text you all day. I value my independence and my space. And this is me honoring that I am an independent and self-reliant person and I can balance that while also being in a relationship because I had this constant self-limiting belief that those two don't go together. So I'm going to prove myself wrong by using communication and telling my partner this is a boundary I have. I don't want you blowing up my phone all day because I need to focus on everything else in my life. He said, okay, that's fine. And now four months on end, that is how our relationship has gone. I don't have to text him all day and it doesn't cause an argument because I communicated it. And now I'm even more fulfilled because I'm like, whoa, a relationship doesn't have to be clingy and codependent and take over my entire life. I can actually balance both of them. And the last thing I did was I started dating someone with a secure attachment and he is now my long-term boyfriend. Many of my past partners had an anxious attachment style and this is actually a thing. Anxious attachments and avoidant attachments draw to each other, okay? They attract each other, they seek each other out because they reassure the other person's limiting beliefs about themselves. Avoidance prefer dating anxious attachment styles because when they're with someone who's more codependent and clingy, it reassures them of how great they are and how good their independence is and that they're actually a healthy individual when they're not. Similarly, an anxious person likes to be with avoidance because they love the chase of chasing somebody's reassurance and validation over and over again because that's what feels most familiar to them. And that combination right there basically creates the most toxic relationship you could ever imagine and it is more common than you would think. Dating a secure helped me overcome all of my limiting avoidant beliefs because secure people also value their independence and their space as well. Chapter three, going from anxious to a secure attachment. Apologies for the change in lighting, but it's kind of cute. The key here is to reprogram your mind to go against all of your limiting beliefs. For example, if we go back to the anxious attachment style signs that I mentioned, if you are jealous of your partner having friends of the opposite gender or like talking to other girls, for example, you are gonna go against that and start reprogramming your mind to think why am I threatened by my partner having friends of the opposite sex? How can I communicate to my partner that this is a concern of mine? How can I peacefully coexist with those friends? What can I do to build more trust in my relationship with my partner so that I feel more ease in these stressful situations? Or if another anxious attachment behavior you have is that you're constantly thinking about them and worrying about your relationship, you then go against that and reprogram your mind by asking yourself, how can I fill my day with more joy and fulfillment so that I can focus more on myself and creating my dream life rather than overthinking about my partner and our relationship. And you do this so your brain has no capacity or space to run away from your present moment anymore. And you can no longer create stressful situations about your partner which are very unlikely to happen. Or if you're worrying that they're angry at you or you feel like your relationship is going to come to an end, you are going to call them up or text them and ask for reassurance because that is okay. 
A lot of us sit and overthink and let this anxiety stew up thinking, oh my God, I wonder what they're thinking about me, what if they're thinking this or this. Ask them what they're thinking. That is how you actually build up trust and a closer bond with your partner. And when you ask them and they reassure you and they're like, nothing is wrong, everything's fine. What that's gonna do is that's gonna ease your anxiety in the moment, but it's also gonna build up this habit that whenever you're stressed, you don't have to sit back and be anxious and think everything's gonna fail. You can communicate with your partner. And over time that communication builds up and eventually, the anxiety stops coming into your head because now you've had enough communication to actually understand what your partner thinks like. If you're constantly worrying that your partner is going to leave you to find someone better, you're going to instead work on self-validation and building up your confidence. And I have two YouTube videos on my channel committed to each of these for a reason because this is so important in being more secure in yourself when you're dating. The key here is to constantly reassure yourself, I love my personality, my values, my morals and what I bring to the table. I am an amazing person to be with and yes, there are other beautiful people out there who may also bring just as much to the table as I do, but I am confident and enough in my inner being that my partner losing interest in me does not represent anything that I lack or mean that I'm a bad person or undesirable. Instead, it just means we were a mismatch. Therefore, I have nothing to worry about. No one is better than me. Someone else's strengths do not emphasize my weaknesses. A lot of people with an anxious attachment style are concerned about becoming an avoidant in, in the process of healing their attachment style. But the key to avoiding this is finding the balance and that balance is the secure attachment style. It's all about learning how to feel secure when you're alone. And the first step of this is an abundance mindset. You need to start affirming to yourself that there are an abundance of ideal partners out there that are desiring you as much as you are desiring them. They will just love you and want to build a fulfilling relationship with you. That is true. But your current scarcity perspective that you're so lucky to find even one person that wants to be in your life is fueling all of your anxiety, stress, and overthinking. So instead of completely and easily attaching to someone because you feel so lucky that they even like you back, instead you should be detached because you know if this doesn't work out, there are an abundance of options out there in the world for me to pick from. And when you constantly affirm this to yourself and create a habit out of having this mindset and thinking like this every single day, you will finally learn how to take a step back and reevaluate when you're dating instead of completely jumping in, making that person your universe and obsessing over them. Instead, you're gonna take a step back and think, do I really like you? Mm, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll date this person at the same time and I'll evaluate my options and, and think about who treats me the best because I'm a great person today and I'm not gonna attach my worth to you or obsess about how much you like me because of course you like me. You will finally raise your standards and that person won't be your everything after the very first interaction. And you'll finally learn how to start rejecting people when they don't fit your standards. And that is how you protect yourself and act like a person with a secure attachment style. The next step is healthy communication. This is an essential pillar to the secure attachment style. You are constantly trying to do the guesswork and being a mind reader, trying to guess what your partner is thinking about you and instead you are just gonna straight up ask them just as I said before. And this is nothing to to be ashamed about okay even I do I will completely misinterpret something that my partner did and instead I could choose to lay in my bed and think oh my god I hate him and he doesn't love me and he's never gonna treat me right or I could call him up and be like what did you mean by this because this kind of triggered me he will tell me and I'd be like oh I completely misunderstood that and took it out of context and then problem is solved we're now closer we created a much healthier safer environment where now we can call each other out and be like i don't really like that you said that and the other person's like oh that's okay this is what i actually meant boom loving safe environment and i then overcome all of my anxiety about asking a person how they feel about me and we create more trust in the process and this then moves us on to what i like to call the addition mindset it's kind of like the abundance mindset but instead you think constantly what can i get out of this situation which is going to benefit me my partner and our relationship you're always thinking about what you can get out of a potential negative and that is what is going to kill off your anxiety about these negatives that will always arise no matter what. For example, if there's conflict, you're gonna think, okay, yes, it might end in tears, but it will bring us closer and my partner will understand me more and that will benefit us in the long run. The next step is to build self-validation. Your anxieties are fueled by low self-esteem and shame. You don't feel good enough on your own, so then you chase others to fill that void. You chase others in the hope that they will prove your insecurities wrong when they validate you. All you want is for someone to turn around and say, wow, you're amazing and you're everything I ever wanted and you're perfect the way you are because you didn't get to hear that much when you were growing up. And yes, I know that would be amazing to hear, but that is the wrong approach. 
you need to be saying, wow, you're amazing and you're all I ever wanted to yourself first. Because once you truly believe that you are actually amazing, you won't stay in or put up with situations or people that don't treat you right. The next step is to let go of your ex and any past hurt. And yes, I know it's easier said than done, but all of that past hurt and trauma is feeding your relationship anxiety every single day and allowing it to grow and take over your life and your life experiences. Because every day you are using past situations to assess your present experience how does that make any sense because yes you should learn from your past experiences and lessons but you cannot try to predict a person's behavior based on what your ex did it's just unfair and as i always say the past does not exist because if today was the first day of your life how would you treat this person? How would you love them if you didn't have all of that past trauma built up in your head? You would give them everything. You would be so trusting and communicative and secure in yourself. So when you wake up every day, you need to act like that is the first day of your life. And the last step to healing your anxious attachment is of course, detachment. I also have a whole video about how to master this on my YouTube channel, which you should go watch. But right now, all I'm gonna say is it's not unhealthy. So many people with anxious attachment styles think detachment is this unhealthy thing, when really, it is also another pillar of having a secure attachment style. What a lot of people get twisted about this is, oh, if I'm detached, then I'm gonna be cold and heartless. No, you can be detached and be loving and caring and affectionate and give your partner the world. The key to detachment is separating yourself from the outcome. You are no longer stressing and worrying every day about what if they think this, what if we don't get married, what if they're not my soulmate, blah, blah, blah. All of that is irrelevant. It's about staying in the present and not giving another person the power to break you. It's loving and feeling and caring without making another person your whole universe. You are your whole universe. Your only attachment in life should be yourself. Chapter four, shadow work prompts and affirmations. And this is gonna be an essential practical step in your healing journey. To start this chapter off, we'll cover journal prompts first. I'm gonna go through avoidant attachment prompts first, then anxious. If you have a disorganized slash fearful avoidant attachment style, then you should be taking prompts from both of these sections. And then at the end of this chapter, we'll go through affirmations that everybody can use. What doesn't feel safe about relationships to me? Why do I feel dependency is a bad thing? What methods do I use to escape from intimacy, e.g. my work, my hobbies, being a serial data. What do I fear will happen if I let someone in? What does my ideal relationship look like? How can I show up for my partner? How can I balance my independence while also having deep connections in my life? What experiences from my childhood have contributed to the formation of my avoidant attachment style? How has my avoidant attachment style impacted my relationships? What are some of my toxic traits, behaviors, or patterns that I've been using which represent my avoidant attachment style? This is where you take accountability. What are some insecurities I have around intimacy and connection? How do I typically respond when someone tries to get close to me? What thoughts and emotions come up for me in these scenarios? What are some of my limiting beliefs around relationships that are holding me back? How can I practice vulnerability in my relationships without compromising my boundaries? What are some healthy coping mechanisms I can use when I feel the urge to withdraw and run away with my avoidant thoughts? And finally, what are some small steps I can take today to start healing my avoidant attachment style? Because now that you completely understand what it's about and how it's holding you back, you can start incorporating habits that are suited to you, your lifestyle, and the people around you to help you reverse that and Work back from it. Okay, and now on to the anxious attachment style shadow work journal prompts. Why do I need to be surrounded by others to feel happy? What do I fear from being alone? What experiences from my childhood have contributed to my anxious attachment style? What are some of my toxic traits, behaviors, or patterns that I am doing which relate to my anxious attachment style? What are some fears and insecurities I have around abandonment and rejection? How do I typically respond when I feel my partner is pulling away and withdrawing from me? What thoughts and emotions come up for me when this is happening? What are some of my limiting beliefs I have about relationships and closeness which are holding me back? How can I practice self-regulation to soothe my anxiety in relationships? What are some healthy coping mechanisms I can use when I feel overwhelmed by my emotions? How have my past relationships slash interactions contributed to my anxious attachment style? What is the root cause of my anxiety when it comes to intimate connections with others? Why do I worry about not being good enough for someone? What are my biggest triggers in relationships and what are the root causes of these? What can my partner do to help me feel more secure? And finally, what steps can I take today and new habits can I incorporate into my everyday life to start healing my anxious attachment and move to a secure one? 
And just like most of my videos, of course, I'm gonna include some affirmations that you can start using today to help you with this problem. So here are 13 affirmations that you guys can use on your healing journey. I am worthy of love and affection. I am capable of building healthy and fulfilling relationships. I trust myself to make healthy choices in my relationships. I am deserving of kindness and respect in all of my relationships. I am capable of setting and enforcing healthy boundaries. I am secure and confident enough in myself to know that I am lovable and worthy of someone else's time and affection. I am learning and growing every day and my attachment style is improving while I do that. I am willing to be vulnerable and open in my relationships because I have a safe space with the people in my life. I only choose partners who are loving, supportive and respectful. I am so grateful for all of the love and healthy connections I have in my life. I can be successful in my career and still have a healthy, loving relationship. I am fulfilled and loved regardless of my partner's actions. And finally, my partner's need for space is not a reflection of their lack of care towards me. That's a special one for you anxious attachments out there. And finally, chapter five, homework time. Step number one, you are going to search attachment style quiz on Google. It will be free, it will be five minutes, and that will be the ultimate test to learn what your attachment style actually is. And then once you've done that, step number two is you are going to Google your attachment style, whether it's fearful, avoidant, anxious, whatever and you are going to learn everything there is to know about it. What resonates with you? What are the traits that you display the most in your relationships? You need to completely understand your style and how that shows up in your life and in all of your relationships so that you can understand yourself more, where your triggers are, what bothers you, because only then will you be able to start working back from each of those traits. Three, you're gonna journal and do the shadow work. You can come up with your own prompts. You can use the prompts I just said in chapter four, but this is all about getting to the root cause of why you have these triggers, why you have these fears and insecurities. Homework task number four, this is my personal favorite and I've done this many times. You're gonna list out, you're gonna write out all of your past relationships, like all of your ex's names and do a whole pros and cons list. This is actually very fun to do. It could be a list of your past relationships or it could be a pros and cons list about your friends or your parents, wh wherever your trauma stems from. In this list, you're gonna write where you felt loved, where you felt rejected. This is so you can get to the specific origin of where your pain points come from. And also to get more comfortable with yourself and your triggers on this. And once you have this list, let's say a lot of this pain stems from your parents, you can sit down and talk to them about it. And if you can't, and maybe it's to do with your exes, at least you now have more clarity on where you felt neglected in your past relationships so that now you can set the necessary boundaries when you are dating in future. Homework task number five you are going to develop some self-awareness. And you're gonna use the list you wrote in task number four to help you with this. Because once you've written about your relationship with your parents, situationships, how you've obsessed over certain crushes or past relationships, you are now gonna read through all of this and identify what self-sabotaging behaviors were you displaying in these situations? How did you contribute to the downfall of those relationships or the hurt you experienced in the process of those relationships? This is no easy task. Holding yourself accountable is very, very hard and it's not pleasant, but it is so necessary and you choosing to do this and committing to this is the bravest act of all. And this is also where you're gonna make the most progress in healing your attachment style. For example, I did this and I finally became aware that every single one of, one of my relationships ended at the three month mark. Every single person I got into a relationship with, I didn't like them at the beginning. Then I realized my toxic trait was dating people and using them as just a time pass because I feared real commitment. Once you identify your toxic traits, you can hold yourself accountable and prevent yourself from making the same mistake over and over again, and then stop attracting toxic partners over and over again, just like I said at the beginning of this video. Homework task number six, you are going to buy two of the following books. One, Attached by Dr. Adam Levine, I'm pretty sure he's the author, and number two, All About Love by Bell Hooks. These are the two books I read and will rave about for the rest of my life. They are very popular books for a reason, and they, honest to God, helped me fully heal my avoidant attachment style and move into a secure attachment style, which is literally the whole reason as to why I'm in the healthy relationship that I'm in today. And homework task number seven, this is the last one, consider therapy. You stay till the end, well done you, I am so proud of you. Look at how committed you are to bettering yourself and being on this journey. Just wow, okay? You might not have it all figured out yet, but just you taking the initiative to wanna change and wanna do better for yourself, 
round of applause for you. Honestly, I'm so proud of you. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget that you can watch all of my videos, including this one, in podcast format on both Spotify and Apple Music. You'll find the links below in the description. Don't forget my new jewelry collection is also dropping soon. You can check out the deets below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment down below what you want to see next, and subscribe because I post every single week. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.